Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Revelation Revealed Ministry, a ministry designed to explain truth in all its fullest. I'm Pastor Herlock, your host, and I'm delighted to be with you tonight again. Could you imagine it's one year since we've started Revelation Revealed Ministry. And therefore, we have to do something much very special. And so I have set aside the month of December. It's now set aside to celebrate the goodness of God and for the many lives that be, have been touched and be enriched, enriched. So for the rest of October to November, we will uh, revisit some great sermons on, on Revelation Revealed Ministry. So don't miss them. There are some lessons you need to underscore as you rework the material. I, um, there are so many requests asking us not to break. And so we will grant you uh, your request. And therefore, the programs will continue each Friday night at 9 to 10 p.m. Please bring a friend. And in this time, make sure that you have your pencils and your you underscore um, statements or words and get into the sermons. Uh, tonight, we have a special speaker. His name is uh, Doc, um, Pastor Skeet. Um, Pastor S Charles Skeet is an ordained minister, a certified addiction counselor, and a registered social worker, and an endorsed community chaplain. He holds a Master of Theological Studies degree from Luther University and a Master of Social Work from the University of Western Ontario. Now he likes walking and certainly and currently he's learning to play the bass guitar. We wish him good luck and we hear we wish to hear him on the big stage one of these days. Boom, 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 boom. But he's a good friend of mine, and one of the things I notice with him, he's a very humble Christian man, and one who loves the youth. He's always reaching out to the youth, and that's a good sign, and it's a good thing for a pastor. I'm so happy to have him on Revelation Revealed Ministry. After we shall have prayed, the next voice you will hear is Pastor Charles Keith. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Father, I thank you for the word, for the privilege of preaching, for the year that we have been on this program, trying to extend an invitation to men and women and with flaming fingers point them to the dazzling glow of the cross. In a special way, may you bless tonight's ministry, tonight's ministry and bless Pastor Skeet, his family, his church, and may someone uh, find peace tonight as, as we all give thanks to you. We pray that you'll bless us tonight in a special way. And remember those who are in turmoil. We have just finished our Thanksgiving. We have lots of food. We have good fellowship. We laughed, we chatted. And so, Father, there are so many. Perhaps half the world do not or does not have such privilege. There are much fighting. Some are running to the hills and rocks. Many who do not have food. I can recall one lady in Ukraine who testified she got one spoon of porridge each day for human survival. Oh, Father, we pray that you will restore peace to that country. And remember those who are running and speak to the hearts of those who are running after them. May you, your work be cut short in mercy 
and love. And may you take us from this world and give us a better one. Hear us tonight, we pray in the worthy name of Jesus. Amen. The title of his sermon is Thanksgiving. And we all need to thank God. And just a couple of days ago, we finished our Thanksgiving. But I want to let you know, friends, every day should be Thanksgiving to God because he's so gracious to us. May you have a wonderful evening. and God bless you. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. It's certainly a delight uh, to be here. The Revelation Revealed. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Herlock, for your kind words of introduction. I am grateful to be a part of this ministry, reaching the hearts of uh, people, changing lives. Now, this weekend is certainly the Thanksgiving weekend, and as a preacher, uh, we are challenged uh, to be relevant and timely and so uh, today I, I just want to simply entitle this message uh, Thanksgiving and and to help set the framework for our conversation today I, I just want to return to our scriptural passage uh, located neatly in the gospel of Luke chapter 17 which chapter did I say Luke 17 and I want to read the verses 11 through 19 and I, and I want to read if you will permit me to read from um, the message translation uh, beginning at 11 it says it happened that as he speaking of Jesus made his way towards Jerusalem he crossed over the border uh, between Samaria and Galilee as he entered a village, ten men, all lepers, met him. They kept their distance, but raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Taking a good look at them, he said, Go show yourself uh, to the priest. They went, and while still on their way, became clean. One of them, when he realized that he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He knelt at Jesus' feet so grateful he couldn't thank him enough. And he was a Samaritan, Jesus said. We're not ten healed. Where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? Then he said, Get up. On your way, your faith has healed and saved you. Speaking on the caption, thanks given. Let us pray. Jehovah God, we thank you for just life, for breath in our bodies, for our families. I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Now I ask that you will forgive us of our sins and that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight. For truly you are our strength and our redeemer. Let everybody say amen. Thanksgiving, having survived the pandemic, having lived in a country where there's no war, no hurricane, no, no floods. I say we have a lot to be thankful for. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's right, neighbor, oh neighbor, there is a lot to be thankful for. This story that we just read uh, finds itself in a rather interesting situation. In uh, olden days when, when people had leprosy it was like the onset of this pandemic if you had covid you had to be removed from the general gathering and be placed in quarantine and isolation we we know that all so well until either the leprosy would pass or one would die leprosy was a death sentence death by this generation of one's physical being Jesus often would 
situate himself in, in places of difficulty, whether with sinners or, or, or with Republicans or with lepers. For Jesus' goal in the incarnate word uh, is to find and to seek and to save those who are lost. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus is looking for those who are lost. I want to share with us three points. How many did I say? Three. That's right. Three points and then I'm going to just close my mouth and send you on your way. At the first point I want to talk about is altitude. Altitude measures distance and location. In Jesus positioning himself in Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. It, it reads there. I'm going to slow down and wait for you. Luke chapter 17 and verse 11 uh, the bible there says and it came to pass as he went to jerusalem that he passed through the midst of samaria and galilee uh, jesus passed by the region of samaria and galilee one biblical uh, scholar j martins in his 2016 article quoting the work of joseph uh, fixmeyer on this account, Fitzmaier declares, and I quote, Whatever the description of this region must be to cor correct when he says the geographical reference, whether it's difficulties on a map or not, alerts the reader once again to the evangelist theological concern to move Jesus to the city of destiny where salvation is to be definitely achieved for human beings. Uh, that's found in the second volume uh, of Fitzmaier's work on Luke. Now, Jesus has this knack for just showing up in places where he's needed. In John 4, which chapter did I say? Chapter 4 of John. Uh, Jesus was uh, passing through J Samaria, but he found himself at the well. Uh, today, Jesus is in your region, and, and wherever your life is at, at this moment, uh, that place might be in your house. It might be on YouTube. Sometimes that region Jesus finds you is a difficult marriage, a difficult child, a, a difficult class, a, an addiction, a health concern, like a bad, ba a bad knee, a bad kidney, a bad heart, depression, or anxiety. Sometimes Jesus finds you at uh, a place of cancer, of lupus, of HIV, Alzheimer, dementia. Sometimes that region may be feelings of inadequacy, difficult church relationships, or fear, or jealousy, or anger, or resentment. Sometimes that place may be a hatred, or self-loathing, pride, ego, education, self-sabotaging behavior. He is passing by today. Your bullying situation, your abusive relationship, your spiritual bankruptcy today jesus is passing by and situating himself in the altitude of your despondency jesus is in the region of your rejection your abandonment your looked over feeling your feelings of neglect today jesus is in the altitude of your brokenness your betrayal your favoritism your scapegoating your difficult child your unconscionable parents your uh, irrational and irritating pastor if you please have mercy jesus is in your region today i said believers jesus is in your region today Come on, somebody. Jesus is in your altitude. I thank God for David who puts it this way in Psalm 139 and verse 8. If I ascend to the heaven. Come on, you are there. If, if I make my bed in hell, uh, behold, you are there. Uh, just Jesus is passing by your altitude today. What will be your response? I thank God that Jesus is not a uh, just a God for the sunny weather when everything is bright or neither is he a God uh, for the mountain for the God of the mountain is still God in the valley and and the God of the sunshine is still God of the storm for Jesus in the vessel. We can smile at the storm. Come on, somebody. I don't care what's happening in your life right now. Jesus is at your altitude. What is 
your response then the second thing uh, the second thing i want to leave with you today is not just the altitude but i want to talk to about your attitude luke chapter 11 and verse 18 state and verse 14 rather states and when he saw them he said unto them go show yourself unto the priest and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Mm -hmm. That they were not cleansed when they left Jesus. But they were when they were on their way. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you didn't get that. Let, let me say that again. They weren't cleansed as Jesus spoke. They were cleansed when they were on their way. Uh, Jesus, after assuring them they were still leprous, after having an answer from Jesus, uh, they were still leprous. But they had to follow the instructions of Jesus, walk and show thyself to the priest. Ah, ah, somebody, ah, come on, come on, somebody. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen uh, we need to have an attitude of, uh, that that says uh, no matter what if, if jesus says it i'm gonna do it and that's gonna settle it for me for the reasoning of God is beyond the reasoning of human beings. There is a way that, that seemeth right to a man, but, but the end thereof, the Bible says, is death. If Jesus says, what? I'm just going to start, I'm just going to start walking. Hallelujah, somebody to the Lamb of God. Sometimes we just have to walk our way to healing we have to walk out of our situation into God's revelation and renewal now now I have I, I, I want you to know that there's some tips to help us in, in getting better getting healthier continuing to have the right attitude number one is this I don't have to know you see we become overly vigilant uh, we, we become overly concerned about everything around us what what people think what people say what will they do can i tell you you're not god if god can keep the stars and the planets in place he can certainly look look after puny you and i i don't need to know i don't need to know how everything is going to go I don't need to know what people will say about what I said. I don't need to know how the outcome is going to be. I do my best. I leave the outcomes to God. Woo, that's a whole load lifted off my shoulder. I don't need to know. And the second thing is, I'm not God. I don't have to control everything. Uh, I am also a certified addiction counselor and, and one of the things that we we come across in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is this idea of acceptance and and, and in the big book it tells a story and, and you would hear if you were to sit in a in a AA meeting uh, people in recovery talk about this idea that we are so consumed with self that not only are we taking the tickets at the gate to the show, we are the main character in the show. We are controlling the likes, the audio, and the stave props. And when the rest of the cast, which is the rest of people in our lives, do not subject themselves to the script we give them, we get bent out of shape and we get all mad. Can I tell you, you are not God. I'm not God. Let God be God and every man be a liar. I can just work on me and let the rest of life be recognizing I don't have to control everything and everybody and life doesn't have to be what I think it needs to be I just need to accept where I am acceptance is the greatest gift 
because whenever I'm disturbed, Alcoholics Anonymous would say, would say it's because there's something wrong with me. There's some person, something, some place, somebody that I think should have done something else than what they're doing because they're not fitting my directorship where I want them to be. And so today, if you're disturbed, it's because something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with me. So I'm not God. I don't have to control everything. The next thing I want to share with you quickly is live in today. The Bible reminds us, friends, that sufficient for today is the evil thereof. And what this means is that God gives us just enough for today. You see, when I live in today, I have enough energy to deal with life. But if I live in the past, what happened to me when I was five years old? What happened to me last week? I drag that into today. It gets heavy. And, and sometimes we're not contented just to drag the troubles of yesteryear into today. We reach forward for the troubles of tomorrow to start worrying today. Hey, listen, somebody says that anxiety is paying interest on a bill you haven't yet got so wait till you get the bill and oftentimes we discover that fear is false evidence appearing real come on somebody we discover that the thing that we want to worry about doesn't even exist when we get there could you just but live in today god says i will supply all your needs just for today just for today now let me just add one more. So I don't need to know everything. I'm not God. I can live for today. And let me add one more thing. Not yet. Come on, say it with me. Not yet. Are you, you're not convinced. Let's just say it with me. Not yet. You see, because something has not yet happened does not mean it will never happen. <laughs> work with the preacher now. Work with the preacher. Come on, work with me. I said because something hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it hasn't yet happened. I can start to give God thanks right now for what I've asked him for, what I've prayed about because it hasn't yet happened, but that doesn't mean it's not going to. Uh, there's a story, there's a story, a story in 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5, 1 to 40. We know this story well. We know that Naaman was a, 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 a general in the Syrian army, and, but he had leprosy. And he was brought to, uh, to the Jordan River and, and was told to dip seven times. He, he thought that the rivers of Damascus were better. Uh, Abana and Farpar were much better rivers, much cleaner rivers. But friend, can I tell you, it's not how good the river is. It's, it's simply where God says we need to be. Because where God says we need to be is where he's going to show up at our altitude and hopefully we'll have the right attitude. Ten lepers were cleansed but only one returned and so uh, Naaman having a choice between doing what he thought should be. That is going to the rivers nearby in Damascus, Abana, or Farpar or doing what the servant of God said he ought to do. That is go to the Jordan. And can I tell you that it was not just in following the word. It was following the word completely. You see, friend, God says dip seven times. Now, now seven times isn't six times. It isn't four times. It isn't five times. When, when God reveals truth, truth to us we need to follow him all the steps that he asked us to Naaman went down first time oh the scab came off and the sword started to second time started to ooze past third time it got a little bloody fourth time he felt like the dirty water would further infect him I believe by the fifth time Naaman started to think this is a waste of time but when you're between the already and the not yet the is and the is to come come on if you are five you gotta press on to seven you don't need to quit way you don't need to stop in between what is about to happen is just around the corner story is told ladies and gentlemen of a gold digger who sold all that he had went out west into the California uh, for the gold rush era and he spent five years digging 
did not find gold and abandoned the project, came back east, broke, saying it was a waste of time. The person who bought the mine within one more meter of digging found gold. Come on. <laughs> Naaman got to five. At six, he was on the edge of his capacity. But it's when we reach our limits that God steps in. And so when he did the seventh time, hallelujah, he came up like a baby, skin so smooth. Listen, friend, if God says the seventh, come on, the first won't do. If God says his church, as in Revelation 12 and verse 17, keep the commandments of God. I have the testimonies of Jesus, God's special revelation of a preacher of present truth that reminds us that it's not just being holy, it's about being holy on God's holy day. I want to tell you, friend, hallelujah, that Jesus says, Jesus says it, and that does it for me. And so Naaman got clean. And when he got cleaned, he wanted to give the man of God a gift. Uh, but you see, friend, the man of God can't be bribed. And so he had the right attitude, but he needed some education. Hallelujah. You may be working on your marriage, and it is still a struggle. Just say, it hasn't reached where it's going to get. Not yet. Uh, you, you may be working on your finances and, 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 and there's more month at, at the end of the money. And, and you feel as if you, you're, you're sinking and, and you're claiming God's promise. I will supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. Don't say my finances are a failure. Just say I haven't reached my financial target yet. Oh, uh, somebody's in school and you've been working on a thesis. Maybe you're working on your dissertation. Maybe you're working on an assignment and it's giving you trouble and you feel like you want to give up. Don't give up. Just say, I ain't finished this project. Not yet. Somebody's in a broken relationship and you've been trying to repair it and it's been giving you challenges. Tell yourself it's going to be restored. It's just not yet. You're trying to rebuild your life. You've been in the claws of addiction. Maybe you've been ravaged by despair. Maybe somebody broke your heart. Come on, listen. Dr. Jesus is passing by. Tell yourself, I'm going to accomplish something. Maybe haven't gotten it. Not yet. But not yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You have to be at the right altitude. You have to have the right attitude. And then you've got to have the right gratitude. Jesus healed the leper. One return. The Bible says in Luke 17, 15 to 18, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering, we're there not. Ten cleansed, but we are the nine. They are not found that return to give glory, save this stranger. We have to give glory. We have to give thanks no matter what. We might have half a loaf, but give God thanks that we have a loaf. We might have a slice of bread, but give God thanks. Come on. You might just have the crumbs from the slice. You got to give God thanks. One time heard a story that a man was so hungry, he climbed up into uh, uh, a tree. And, and uh, when he was up there, he said, I'm going to eat this last banana and then commit suicide. Hi himself, he in, had intended from the tree branch. When he ate the banana and he dropped the skin, somebody passed by and ate the skin. And this man said, no, I can't commit suicide. Listen, friend. Your life may be in a difficult place. It might feel like you've reached the end of your rope. You might feel like you've been hard done by. 
You might feel that no matter what you've tried, you're pinned in. Uh, you might feel today that the whole world has gone and left you. Maybe depression is descending on you like a dark cloud. Maybe anxiety is causing you not to even be able to face the crowd. But let me tell you something. Jesus one day left the splendor of heaven, came to earth, which was his altitude. He he was spat upon, he was crucified, and he died and was placed in a tomb. And the attitude to the word of God was, I laid down my life so I can take it up again. Friday night came, he said, not yet. Saturday night came, not yet. Not yet does not mean not ever. Then early Sunday morning, the voice of God says, Son of man, thy father calleth thee. Jesus came forth and declared, I am he who was dead. Now I'm alive forevermore. I am the resurrection and the life. Praise God today that your morning can be different to your night. Repent me endured for a night. But joy, real joy comes in the morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thank God today that I was able to just get up. I thank God today for a wife and a family that still loves me. I thank God today that even though I have debt, I can still afford uh, to have a meal. Have a meal missed a meal because the God whom I serve is well able. He has taught me when things are beer and there's just lemongrass outside or little of the peppermint I have planted outside, I could warm some water and let the thing tar out in the water and then have me uh, some breakfast. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. See, God, God never promised us always a five course meal. But he says, our bread and our water shall be sure. During this weekend of Thanksgiving, don't just party it up and live it up. Take time to just say thank you, God, for all that you've done, all that you will do. Friend, Jesus wants to be leader of your life. He wants to take care of you. He wants you to bring you in a place like the psalmist David in Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his path. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Jesus wants to take care of you. Would you let him in? He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman hear my voice, I'm going to come in and have dinner. Would you let him in today? The song says, give thanks with a grateful heart. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul is at rest. Oh God, I give you thanks. Why don't you bow your head with me today as we invite God one more time to be leader and savior of our lives. Loving Father, we thank you for this ability to minister the word. On this Thanksgiving weekend, when people are concerned with eating, we want to be concerned with the bread of life. In life, we have all kinds of difficulties and challenges, but thank God you've overcome the world so we can trust you. Thank God you are passing by our altitude. Wherever we are at, you can meet us there. And our attitude has to be, whatever you ask us to do, give us the grace to do it. Forgive us of our sins and fill us with your spirit and help us have an attitude of gratitude that says, great is your faithfulness. Come soon, God, and take us out of this world. We love you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to share the word of God today with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. We worship you.
If you would like to secure your copy of Pastor Herlock's book, Music and Worship, Contemporary Issues, please visit ourrevealed.org. And if you would like to purchase Pastor Herlock's newest CDs, please visit ourrevealed.org for more details.